me ducks welcome back another day another deck um we continue with uh taking a look at greater detail of the decks that we showed on spotlight at the weekend with cheryl from one this emporium um every day i think where's my incense um what i've decided today is i'm going to do this walkthrough and then I'm going to do what I do every holiday, or I say holiday, time off work, um, by decluttering my desk because I do it <laughs> religiously um, every couple of months. And when I've done it, such a sense of satisfaction, and I say to myself, I'm not gonna let it get cluttered again. If I was to pan the camera around, it's cluttered. It just happens. I get decks come in, I leave them to one side, I think I'll work with that, I'll work with that, I want to play with this. And I've got my writing utensils and things like that, because I've done some letters and cards. Everything gets in a mess and topples over. And yeah, I find it really, uh, I find it really challenging <laughs> to keep. Uh, I think a clear desk is a clear mind for me as well. So. A clear space is a clear mind. Anyway, the reason why I'm here today, as I said yesterday, if you saw yesterday's video, we will be looking at the Yolanda Witch Tarot, the healing art of magic. Now, <laughs> here's a little story. Uh, we took a, a, a brief look at this on Saturday, as I mentioned, and whilst I was going through it, I was like, yeah, I really like this. And there was something very familiar about it. And I was thinking, in my mind, I was thinking, is it Tower of the Moon Garden that's making me feel like this deck is really familiar? And then this morning, I thought, oh, I must do, and this is what I said in my mind, I must do a walkthrough of the Yolanda Tarot. And then I thought, no, that can't be right. That can't be what it's called because I've already got the uh, Yolanda Tarot. <laughs> this is the uh, the problem with having 900 tarot decks. There's no walkthrough of this that I have done on YouTube, which can only mean one thing. Because every deck that I have received since I started the channel seven and a half years ago, I have done a unboxing or walkthrough or first impressions and I've showed them. This is not on YouTube by me, which can only mean that I've had this seven years plus. And um, I have worked with it because I've just had to put it back in order. And I've just noticed actually I've put the, when I've done that, I put, it in between a card because I can see a card sticking out, but it's not easy to go in. Tuck box. Um, so I'm like, that's why it looks so familiar. Okay, so from what I understand, this is the fourth iteration of this deck. This is the third. So originally it was called the Swedish Witch Tarot. Okay. And Yolanda, who is also Rosie Bjorkman, um, is a famous Swedish witch, collaborated with Hans Arnold, the artist, to create that deck. Originally, it was a black and white sketch deck of Major's only, uh, a Major's only deck. And then it became a 78 uh, card deck. Um, and it had gray borders. Now, this came out in 2008, so that's what, 16 years ago now. Um, it has a little white book, which is quite chunky. Uh, it's in multiple languages. Um, it's by AGM in a tuck box, and it has these lilac, oh, nearly dropped them all, lilac borders. Um, and it has multiple languages along the sides. Now, I have seen people trim this and just have the um, the sides removed so that you get the number at the top and the full 
and I contemplated doing that, but apparently now, um, apparently it's worth quite a bit, or so I'm told, or unless that's the, the Swedish witch. Um, so the Swedish witch tarot, which became the Yolanda tarot, is now the Yolanda witch tarot, okay? And this is a new iteration, a new release in this presentation set. It's by Findhorn Press. Um, it's got an amazing book, um, a really big chunky book, but I just want to read a little bit about what it says on the back. So the Yolanda Witch Tarot is a deck and book set that blends tarot, magic, shamanism and indigenous storytelling. The 78 card deck portrays both major and minor arcana through colourful depictions of female archetypes, animal guides and esoteric symbolism from witchcraft, alchemy and shamanic healing traditions. There's a great thing in here in the book um, about her story, her story, because um, they're saying before history, which is very patriarchal, recorded history, um, we were goddess-centric, we were uh, revering Gaia um, and, uh, you know, the divine, uh, female divine. And then, of course, we we have um we had patriarchy so it goes back instead of saying history it's her story H history her story michael jackson did that whole thing into of his uh, greatest hits his story um the comprehensive 400 page guidebook rosie bjorkman known as yolanda the witch shares unique in-depth card interpretations that draw on spiritual and magical teachings from indigenous healers, shamans, witches, magicians, and wisdom teachers from all over the world, including Madame uh, Blavatsky, I think it's Blavatsky, Alistair Crowley, and the Sweet Medicine Healing Tradition of the Deer Tribe Metris Medicine Society. And before anybody says, oh, Simon, you don't like uh, Toth-based decks. I don't really see it as a Toth-based deck. I see it more RWS in terms of its full 78 illustrations. But I get why um, it's often referred to. And you can see Alistair Crowley's influence in keywords. There are keywords on this deck, which there aren't, actually, in the Yolanda Tarot. You've just got Four of Cups, for example, in here that will have an associated keyword. They've also changed like this deck here. And um, when we get to the end of the majors, uh, we have the world. It's now called the universe um, in this version. So there are some, some changes between Yolanda and Yolanda Witch. You'll find direct and restored meanings for each card. Easy to remember keyword, short, uh, short practical exercises and symbolic and healing stories to help you understand the insight each card brings. Illustrated by internationally known artist Hans Arnold, the playful Im imagery allows you to instantly grasp the energetic meaning of the cards drawn and intuitively understand the issue at hand. Offering a hands-on way to learn card divination and magic together, this set includes new and unused card spreads for readings that will awaken your own inner wisdom. There is nothing on the back here that tells you that this was originally the Swedish Witch Tarot or indeed Yolanda Tarot. So I can understand why perhaps not everybody would be aware of that. When I did the spotlight with Cheryl, she did mention that this deck was had been out before um, but I didn't make the connection that it was uh, the Yolanda Tarot. Um, so it tells you about Rosie uh, Bjorkman, is a recognised expert in tarot and a court in her native Sweden, um, and she is known as Yolanda the Witch. And Hans Arnold, who passed away in 2010, um, was a renowned illustrator known for his whimsical fairy tale and horror illustrations and the quirky cover art for ABBA's Greatest Hits album. Who knew? Um, so yeah, um, Yolanda Witch. Let's turn this over um, because it'll be fun to do a side by side. 
this wasn't this isn't a huge deck i don't even think it's as uh oh it is it's the same size as an rws it feels just looking at it maybe it's a, the illusion of the big border and having a smaller image and the images are a little bit bigger in this this is a nice magnetic closure box as you can see it opens up like this beautiful beautiful artwork the book is a chunky book and there's a lot of good stuff in this i'm not going to spend too much time uh going through the book but there's a lot of information even before you get to the card so it tells you about tarot is a pictorial lab, uh, language the origins of tarot a scientific approach the whole sort of because they talk about carl jung and then obviously if you're talking about carl jung and you're talking about archetypes you then talk about the collective subconscious um, and how we tap into those archetypes basic building blocks etc symbolic mapping uh, construction of the book here's the bit about her story history is always written by the visitor uh, sorry by the victor when two cultures clash the loser is wiped out and the winner writes the history books that glorify themselves and speaks disparagingly of the enemy that has been defeated quite right not quite right as in that's the right thing to do that's quite right in, in the statement that's what happens Therefore, history is always a one-sided account. Her story reflects our human ancestral outlook on life as spiritual beings in the time preceding his story, the time before the patriarchy, the culture of Abraham, before the doctrines of one male creator Lord was established. So again, it goes back to that old path. Um, talks about the art of magic, the Deer Tribe Metris Medicine Society, um, alternative medicines, etc. So really, um, the art of scrying. There's loads of stuff in here. Uh, let the reading begin. Um, we've got a whole section on card spreads, as you can see here, which is pretty cool. Um, a one card a day, do magic with the cards, the Society of the Crystal Skull, and then we go into the Major Arcana. So just to give you an example of what you get for your cards, you've got your picture of the Fool, the title, um, a quote, keywords, astrological sign, the planet, correspondences of the planet and colour, um, then you get significance, the relationship, you get reversed, you get practice, and then you get this her story. Um, and it goes back and tells you uh, kind of the inspiration behind the card based on old traditions. So in shamanic tradition, the fool is represented by the Hayoka, a sacred figure that protects the children. Coyote is their protective spirit animal. Hayoka is the clown who shows people how to laugh at their own stupidity. Humour as medicine. Laughter heals the body and soul. So I really like that. And then here in the italics, it gives you uh, from the beginning, there was the son once young, now a grandfather. And it, so it gives you that sort of history of um, the cards. It go, carries on here as well. But look at all this information. Uh, storyteller, we get a little bit about Loki, the art of magic, shamanism, is showmanship, all this, the inner child, medicine for the soul, all this for each card. I mean, so we've got what, two, four, six, eight, nine, nine pages just for the fall. So this is a really substantial book, which is wonderful. From what I understand as well, there was a guidebook that you could get, um, but I don't think it was in English um, originally that you could accompany the Yolanda Tarot. Now we've, we've, got, we've got that within this set. So let's look at the cards. I 
I don't particularly like it when they do this. I get that, you know, they've got to get a compact set with a 400 page guidebook in there. How else can they probably do it? I'm not, I'm not sure. But I just find whenever we separate the cards into two, let's try and get that out. That's another thing. Um, whenever we separate the cards into two piles, make sure the one before is the three of cups, we always, always end up with this divide. It's frustrating. Um, just it just always happens. Hey ho, I'm not sure. You can you can take that out if you wanted to and put the cards into a bag and put the book on a bookshelf. I don't know. I'll probably keep it all together in in this pack. The cards now are bigger. So just to show you here, they're taller and wider, which means the image um, you get more of the image. Not a lot more. But if you look at, in fact, let's bring the camera down while we're talking about the cards. Okay, so as I was saying about the image, if you look closely, um, you see more, more of the tree than you do here. The gap is bigger between uh, the jaw of the alligator. So it's almost touching there. Um, more of the tail is shown here. So we're talking millimeters, but the image, if I was to line up, you see uh, the line coming down. It's probably there in a straight line. It would end here. So you do get more image in the new, the new uh, version. Cardstock is also a lot better. This is a nice, uh, it's, it's thicker compared with this one, which is very thin. Um, so yeah, better quality. In fact, if I show them like this, you will see uh, the difference in, in thickness. Um, so the cardstock is, is nice. That's quite a chunky deck. Uh, yeah. The backs have the same designs. They kept the designs the same. So this is the back of the Yolanda Witch, the new version. And this is the back of um, the Yolanda Tarot. This back has a border. I never understand why borders are put on the backs of tarots. Um, and annoyingly in this one, it has a copyright on the back of each card. Copyright 2008 AGM, AG Muller. Um, it's lighter in color as well. This is a darker, uh, richer blue. So much prefer the borderless back and no copyright as well. All right, so I think that's the kind of production bit undertaken. Yeah, you can see this is quite a thin, thin deck really. It's very disappointing with the cardstock. I just thought, yeah, that's not gonna hold up. Um, but now we've got it in, uh, in a better, uh, better presentation really. Gone are the keywords in other languages. So we had the fall at the bottom and then here you would have um, the three um, El Loco etc. Uh, three languages down the sides. Um, I quite like it having a white border. I did say on Saturday it's a shame there's still quite a lot of border on here. I do think it would have been better to perhaps just add a panel at the bottom and have more of the image, a borderless version. Particularly as this is the fourth iteration now, and I'm sure Finn Horn would have seen that people have uh, lobbed this deck, mutilated this deck by taking off and made it borderless. So missed opportunity, I think, to bring it out as a borderless version. They could have had zero, the full, just had you know the full image. Anyway, here is our fall. We have a crocodile, a tiger, um, and we've got, that almost looks like an egg, doesn't it? In this one, it kind of looks like a little pool of some sort, but again, it could be an egg to symbolize that, uh, that beginning. 
So lots of animals in this. We've got birds in the trees, etc. Butterflies, as I mentioned, the tiger. But it's a beautiful image. Really, really like it. Then we have our magician. What, and using like an elephant's head as a shield. Which is interesting. This is the cover of uh, the Yolanda Witch, this, this version which is our High Priestess. There's actually a word written there in the egg. It says Arnold. Arnold. Oh, as in Hans Arnold. I wonder if his name appears, it does. I've only just realized it's there as well. His, uh, his name, Hans Arnold, is appearing in the images. I don't know how I feel about that. Although, having said that, <laughs> you know, I have uh, Pix's signature on my arm, which appears on every one of the, uh, but that's kind of like part of the design rather than the word Arnold. But anyway, it's there. And I don't think it's going to be, I didn't spot it in the fall, for example. So I'm not sure how easy it will be to spot in every card. Like this one, for example. Oh, it's there. See, part of it's almost missing on the original. I love the little panda. All right, Emperor. You know what? My eyes now are trying to find Arnold. <laughs> where's Arnold? I forget where's Wally uh, in each of the images. I am spotting it now every time. The color saturation is different. Look at the uh, the pinky skin tone of the little cherub up at the top compared to here. I'm so pleased that I realised this is, um, uh, no it's not, I thought when I saw this that that would be the, the chariot card, but it's not. Um, I'm so pleased that I realised that I'd actually got this deck before doing this walkthrough. The, the nods to Again, this is why I think it's quite Thoth inspired, certainly not necessarily Thoth based, but certainly Thoth inspired with the, the links to uh, ancient Egypt. I don't subscribe to that school of thought, by the way, but I'm sure people know that. Love this hermit card, it's fantastic. Got the wisdom of the owl. We've got these three hounds, look, that are being walked. Love the web, the interconnectedness. Wheel of Fortune. Strength. So again, which is an RWS, strength is 11 rather than 8. The Hanged Man. Got some flying fish. <laughs> I mean, it's rich in symbolism. It's lots, and again, this is where the book will be really handy with you know, nine pages of information for each, each card. Epic death card, love it. We have temperance. Yep, 
you just know as well after this I'm going to be googling ABBA's greatest hits <laughs> so I can see the artwork uh, that Hans Arnold did the only greatest hits I know is ABBA Gold and it's, it's not that one The tower has Lakshmi. Sparrow Beetle. We've got the uh, the serpent wrapping around the tower. There's the star card. Yeah, this, this version, the colours do seem a little bit washed out compared to this. These seem more saturated. And this is one of the images where um, I looked at on Saturday and thought, this, this image is really familiar to me. And then in my mind, I was thinking, well, maybe it's Tower of a Moon Garden that I'm comparing it with. judgment card is beautiful so yeah so here's a change the original Yolanda has the world I don't know if that's what it was when it was the Swedish witch um, but in the Yolanda witch it's now the universe exactly the same image now here's some changes as well so in Yolanda Tarot, we just have two of wands, ace of wands, etc. In the new version, we have the introduction of a keyword. So for our ace of wands here, we have initiative. Look at this. Isn't this a fantastic image? We have dominion. So you can see why um, it's influenced by uh, Toth. Three of Wands is Virtue. Love that image. It's fantastic. Four of Wands is Completion. See, I'm, I'm very much more numerology and I want to have Completion as a four. Completion for me is a 10. A four is stability. No issues with conflict for five, particularly five of ones. Got this ostrich here, look. I mean, the artwork is, is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Victory for the six of ones, yeah. Courage for the seven. Wow, that would take courage, wouldn't it? Being confronted by a tiger, a lion and a bear. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. You just knew that was coming, didn't you, when I said that? You probably sang along with it with me. <laughs> Eight of Wands, Swiftness. Nine of Wands is Strength. And the Ten of Wands is Oppression. The page is now the Princess. So I really think they've kind of taken it to the next level or it could be that the intention was always and AGM you know were more kind of wanting it to be more traditional but the page becomes a princess and the knight becomes the prince look at the colour differences there I actually prefer this version in this card this one is is too saturated for me. The 
queen is still the queen. This is the image from uh, the box of Yolanda. And the king is the king. And then we go into cups and we have affection. Isn't that gorgeous? Just look at this artwork. Isn't it beautiful? Ah, oh, and this is what I want Tarry to always be. Two of Cups, of course, is love. I love the yin and yang of the, uh, it's almost like an eclipsing of the sun, isn't it? But the yin and yang and their mer people. We have gentleness for the Three of Cups. Patience. <laughs> She's waiting to give birth. Yeah, I do find that quite distracting. I'm not going to keep going on about it. It's less obvious in, in some cards. I mean, here it's just written straight through her. Lots of all seeing eyes there. Pleasure. I love this image. We have fantasy. It's so great that this deck is back, particularly because I've been hearing about the ridiculous amounts of money that people are asking for um, the out of print decks. Charisma. For the nine and satisfaction for the ten. Sorry, you can hear the washing machine. I've had to do laundry today, <laughs> and I didn't want to delay doing this uh, this walkthrough. So hopefully, if I put some soft music on in the background, you might not hear the washing machine too much. Uh, Prince of Cups. What a strange horse. <laughs> Queen. And this gorgeous king of cups. Look at these peacock feathers. He's really peacocking. There's a crab at the front here. There's many things, isn't it? And we have our... Uh, now, in the Yolanda, we're referring to pentacles as pentacles. In this one, it's coins. And so there's, there's been lots of changes. I'm so pleased that these have gone there. <laughs> so, ace of pentacles, ace of coins. Um, the two is change. The three is concern. The four is stability. So we've got stability at last for a four. And it makes sense for the coins for stability as well. Oh, look at this rat. We have guilt for the five of coins, five of pentacles. Trying to work out what all these are. are they standing on. Generosity for the six. Wow, that washing machine's getting louder and louder. Despair for the seven. 
gorgeous image. Look how they're numbered in this. And the next one, have they all been numbered? No, they've all had different things in them. But the eight, this little bunny lot with his carrot. The sun is reaching down here. Gain for the nine. Success for ten. <laughs> it's kangaroo taking first place. And then we have Princess and the Page. Prince and the Knight. The Queen. Look at her. And we have our final suit, which is the swords. Love this piece for the two of swords. And again, we've got the yin and yang symbol behind. Sorrow for the Three of Swords. Interesting image. Truce for the Four of Swords. We've got this kind of guru figure here levitating. And there he is. <laughs> Worry. Oh, look at that. The image is reversed. That's interesting why they've reversed it. Science for the Six of Swords. Doubt for the Seven. Distraction for the eight. That would distract you though, wouldn't it? From whatever you're doing, let's be honest. We have cruelty for the nine of swords, which we often refer to as the nightmare card in the RWS. Devastation for the ten of swords. Eight cents. And then our final course, we have Princess and Page. Prince and the Knight. The Queen of Swords. And the King of Swords. So there we are, that's the Yolanda Witch Tarot, um, the new iteration of Yolanda Tarot or Swedish Witch Tarot. I quite like what they've done with the title, incorporating uh, both previous decks and I know there was a majors only first black and white sketch. I do like this art style, this is like the pen and ink uh, sketchy drawing, I, I really like it. Um, it does harken back to uh, quite a few of the older decks that we know and love. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Did you have Yolanda? Um, do you like the changes that have been made? Certainly the quality has improved. Um, but then again, you might like the thinner decks uh, for shuffling, etc. Um, but yeah. Um, I think having the addition of this tome of a bulk uh, makes this kind of set worthwhile getting. I'm trying to see what it's retailing 
at. So it says $40 US, $49.99 Canadian. Um, I'm not sure what Cheryl is selling it for uh, over at Wanda Emporium, but there will be a link um, in the description of this video. And remember, if you do buy through Cheryl at Wanda Emporium, to use the code down here at the bottom, which is Hermits10, to get a further 10% off at the till by using that code. Thank you for watching everybody. I'll be back tomorrow and we will take a look at, let's see, we'll go with tomorrow, the Black Seed Tarot. We'll have a look at that one tomorrow. All right, everyone, have a fantastic rest of your week and until next time, go in peace, namaste and blessed be. Thank mm -hmm. you.